Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. And in this episode, we're gonna take a look at Adobe Muse and specifically how to create a hero slideshow for your homepage. Now you might be asking, well, what's a hero slideshow? Well, if you've been to any of the major brand websites these days, chances are you've encountered a hero slideshow. Let me show you a few just to give you some examples. I'm gonna hop over to my web browser. And in my web browser, I'm on uh, apple.com. And this is a big giant hero slideshow that's playing on their website. So it's just toggling through their latest news and latest announcements and latest products. And of course I can navigate to it by tapping these little dots to jump specifically to one of the four or five things that they're highlighting uh, at the current time on their website. And you might think, well, is that just an Apple thing? No, it's not. So for example, let's head over to a competitor. There's Samsung. So Samsung, same kind of thing. And Samsung makes all kinds of products. So therefore their hero slideshow goes from everything from TVs to refrigerators to phones and everything else. And it's just, there is navigating from left and right with these big arrows. So that's Samsung. What about Coca-Cola? Well, Coca-Cola took a different approach. It's a hero slideshow. It's a little um, shorter from the top, meaning it's not taking up the whole homepage, um, but it is basically there to navigate. And if I just wait long enough, it'll swap over to the next image of that they want to talk about. Or I could just press the arrow key and go to the next one if I choose to. So uh, these slideshows basically are there to kind of, you know, not take up the space for four or five big items on the homepage, you know, in four or five different spots, but basically just use one spot to kind of uh, get some, get several messages across or several products across at the same time. Here's Bose.com, same thing. Uh, this one's uh, highlighting the new uh, Quiet Comfort 2, uh, their HD TV all-in-one music system. Um, then it goes on to their one of their portable music systems. And again, giant slideshows on the homepage to kind of invite users in to show what's going on. So let's see how to build one of those in Muse. Now, oh, and before we head over to Muse, um, what makes these different than a standard slideshow is, well, the slideshows themselves are not just images. As you can see, there's text that goes along with any one of these. Uh, so we're gonna see how to do that in Muse. So I'm gonna head over to Muse where I've got um, a project that's already going for the website. And on the website, I wanna go ahead on the homepage and double click on it. And I wanna to start to build the slideshow. Now, I'm working at a lower video resolution or image resolution um, so that I can record this video. However, I'm gonna zoom out so that you can see um, the page itself. And you can see that there's a lot of information if you scroll down the homepage, but on the actual um, top of the homepage, there's a big space that's been left blank. And that spot is going to be for our hero slideshow. So let's go in and let's start off with what widget do we want to use? Now, if we head over to the widgets, there are slideshow widgets, and those will be the ones you'll be tempted to grab. And there are basic blank, light box, thumbnail, so forth and so on. But those aren't the ones you want to use in this case because number one, um, they're not going to allow you really to put in a multitude of, of content like images and text. Sure, you can go in Photoshop and make your image and put text on it, but we want to be able to mix the two pieces of content um, as text and graphics right in a slideshow. So instead of using a slideshow per se, we're going to go to Compositions and we're going to use the Tool Tip Composition. Now this is normally used on a website when you want to highlight various parts of an image and have little tool tips pop up that explain what those um, parts are. But we've got a trick on how we can use this tooltip composition for the hero slideshow. So let's go ahead and just drag it out onto the page. And when I drag it out on the page, just like with most widgets nowadays, it will pop up with the settings for this widget. And since I know some settings I want to go ahead and change right off the bat, I might as well go ahead and do them since it popped up. So the first one I want to change is the position. Right now it's scattered, meaning that those tool tips can pop up anywhere. And I want to change that quickly from scattered to stacked. So they're all stacked on top of each other. Next thing I want is uh, the event on click is fine. Uh, the transition can be fading or it can be horizontal swiping like some of the ones you saw earlier. 
and I want to change the transition speed. So I'm going to go, the transition speed is going to be very slow. It's going to be four seconds. So we get a nice gradual fade between the images because it shouldn't just jump out at you. It should just happen naturally. Of course, we want to auto play it and we want the slide itself to stay up for six seconds. And again, you can change these to whatever you want. And last but not least, we definitely want to turn off this default of hide all initially, because then what would happen is someone would navigate to your homepage and they just wouldn't see anything for the first six seconds. <laughs> and so we don't want that to happen. So turn off the hide initially. And if they're on a mobile device, swipe is enabled automatically so they can just swipe through the uh, slideshow. And that's great. Okay, so now that we got the initial settings gone, or uh, down, now we're gonna go ahead and just move this uh, to the center point of the page, which I think is right here. And we're just gonna put it up at the top. And now we're going to drill down to the uh, hero image itself, or the hero frame itself, and we're going to specify a size. So over here, um, we have the X and Y coordinates. But um, because again, I'm working at a smaller screen size than most of you will be, I'm gonna have to pull the window out a little bit more to expose, hopefully expose, um, my width and height. So see, it was condensed, it was off screen. I expose it out a little bit more, pull it out a little bit more. Now I can get to the width of this slideshow, which I'm gonna make mine nice and wide, 1700 pixels. And then we're gonna get to the height uh, which I don't know the number, so I'm just going to pull it down manually until I get to the bottom there, and it works out to be 716. All right, so now that I've got the uh, width and height down, uh, I'm going to go ahead. Now I don't need that uh, size anymore, so I'm just going to pull the window back over and then shrink it back down so I can see everything. And then we're just going to pick this whole thing up and move it over and again center it on the um, page, at the top of the page there. So now that we've got the slideshow centered, I'm just gonna pull this over and we're going to now get rid of the sample content that's in it. We can either get rid of the sample content first or move the, move the triggers down, but let's get rid of the sample content. So I click the um, content to select it, hit the delete key and now it's gone. Now I'm gonna basically take the triggers, I'm just gonna hold down my shift key and grab each one there. Let's see if I can do this here. I might have to zoom back in. It's giving me a little bit of a trouble there on that one. So let's zoom in on it a little bit more so I can get them selected. Now that I got them selected, uh, I can zoom back out and just simply, I may not be able to zoom back out because it's too small. But let's go ahead and just simply uh, pull those down now. Okay, I'm just gonna pull them straight down to where they're near the bottom and again, those will be those dots that people can click on to get if they want to manually navigate your um, hero slideshow. All right, so next we will just uh, go through and again, keep continue deleting the sample content. So that's the one from the second or third one. That's actually the third one. Let's see if we can get to the second one. And we got it deleted. Okay, the next thing is uh, on, these, um, on this tooltip widget, the frames themselves default to rounded corners on three of the corners. So we're gonna go back to the first one and we're just gonna unround the corners just by clicking them off to make sure they're all unrounded. And we're just gonna make sure our stroke is set to none. We'll go to the sec or third one, do the same thing, unround the corners. And then we can go to the second one and unround the corners. So now we no longer have rounded corners on these which by the way, let's make sure we got them selected while we're doing that. And stroke of zero, there we go. And make sure it's selected first, which I didn't do previously. Stroke of zero, no rounded corners. And last but not least, the first one, make sure the same thing, select it, no rounded corners, stroke of zero. Okay, so now we've got this all cleaned up to where it's ready to go. So. We have three here. If you wanted to add, you know, like the Apple one had four or five on there, you just click the plus sign and you can add as many as you need. But I'm gonna work with just the three, so we're good to go. So switching back to the first one, now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the content in. So I'm gonna select the frame and I can go get this content anywhere. I can place it in, I can copy and paste it in, I can drag and drop it in. 
and I want to basically copy and paste it in. And I'm gonna copy and paste it from a different sample page that I've got set up with the content already in it so you don't have to watch me type and, and rearrange the content and rearrange the graphics. So um, the first one I'm going to do is actually grab the image. Because remember I said these can contain images or text because it's not technically a slideshow. So while the frame is selected, I wanna fill that frame with an image. So I'm just gonna go to fill, but not pick a color. I'm gonna click the fill um, link here for that frame that's selected. And, I'm, and again, make sure your frame is selected with the squares and not the actual trigger. Uh, let's go ahead and click our fill and we're just gonna say fill it with an image. And then we can go in and find our slideshow uh, images here. And let's see here. There it is. So I've got one. There we go. I just want to make sure it's the right one. Yes, it is. So I've got the one there and let's go ahead and open it up. And that will fill that image. But again, you can control how it does it. So I want to do it from the center. And I want to say that I want to scale to fit so that we see the entire image left to right. Now, of course, this is a panorama image, so it's really wide and not very tall, so it's leaving a lot of white space at the bottom of our slideshow, and that's okay, because I've got text to go there. So now I'm gonna go to that sample page that has my text on it, scroll down and find my text, and there it is, the tours. So I'm just gonna select this uh, set of text here that's been grouped together, head back over to the home page, and just simply paste it in. Now I can rearrange it in that frame anywhere I want. And that looks good right there. So that will be the first image that people see. Now we'll just switch to the second one. So we'll just click the trigger. That switches us to the second one. Once again, make sure you then select the frame because that's where you're gonna put the content in. File, place, sorry, not file, place. We're gonna do fill, image, and we're gonna grab the second image for our slideshow. And that would be this one. Yep, that's the one. So open. And again, it comes in at its original size, which we wanna now say, uh, go back to fill, and we wanna now say that we wanna uh, do it from the center, actually from the center center, and we wanna do a scale to fill. So it'll just fill up that frame, even if it has to crop some off. And last but not least, we want to go get our text that goes in there. So again, I'm just going to go up, or actually down, grab our text, copy it, go back home, paste it. And again, you can make that text uh, in, in Muse pretty quickly, uh, just creating a frame and typing your text in and changing your fonts and so forth and so on. But there's our soar and explore. Last but not least, our third one, again, select the frame, Fill the frame with an image, go find your image, and in this case it's going to be, um, let's see our slideshow here, did I scroll past it? Yes I did. Slideshow number three, and same thing, from the center we're going to scale to fill, and now we're just ready to bring in our text. So we'll click off that, go to our text. Text is at the top, deep dive, copy, home, paste. And again, we can put this anywhere we want. And that's our slideshow. So now if we uh, click on this, first one, and again, just click off of it, second one, third one. And so let's see what it does right off the bat. Let's go to file, preview page and browser, It builds the HTML, shows our hero image, and then after six seconds, it'll take four, it'll do a four second transition to our next one. And again, if we scroll down a bit, you'll see the triggers there that you can then click on to quickly get to the one you want or go back to the first one, uh, whichever one you want. Again, it takes the four seconds to fade it because that's what we set it to, but that's how you build one of these hero slideshows. Now, I'm gonna show you a bonus tip and the bonus tip is, what if you want your content to scroll over it? Meaning right now that, that hero image is moving up 
with our content. I want the I want the hero slideshow to stay in place, and I want the content that's underneath to scroll over the top of it. So let's head back to Muse, and we're gonna do a couple of things. First of all, we're gonna take the whole thing, the whole um, widget, and we're gonna move over to our layers. Muse uh, has layers now. And on our layers, we're gonna make a new layer called Slideshow. So we're just gonna call it Slideshow. And then we're gonna click OK, and we're gonna move Slideshow down to the bottom, so it's the bottom most layer. And we're gonna take this object that's selected and move it down to that layer, just by dragging the little square down there. And why is my layer not letting me do it? Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so now that it's there, I can go ahead and turn that layer off, turn that layer on, and um, that object is uh, tied to that layer. So that means that since it's on the bottom, everything else is on a layer above it. But that's not what's gonna stop it and, and keep it in place and let everything scroll over it. What's gonna do that is if I select the whole thing once again, and I use the pin feature in Adobe Muse to pin it to the top of the page. So now it's on a layer below everything else, it's pinned to not move, and now everything else can move over the top of it. And if you, uh, for example, were to scroll the Apple site, for example, uh, you'll, well, actually this one doesn't do it, but sometimes they will keep the navigation in place. So that as you scroll down, the navigation bar stays there, but the content scrolls up under it. So same thing, that would be the pinning feature. So now that we've done that, uh, we can preview the page and browser once again. Generates the HTML, shows me the slideshow. Again, six seconds later, the slide, slide will change with a four second uh, transition. And now if I start scrolling, the content will just scroll up over the top of it and underneath the Echo Adventures and soon to be navigation bar. So that's using layers to control what your content does and what stays behind or goes underneath or goes above just by using layers as you traditionally do in design. So that's how to create a hero slideshow in Adobe Muse. Thanks for your time. My name's Terry White.